of, of uh, Exodus. Exodus 33. We'll get there in just a few moments. Part of where I'm at tonight comes from service on Sunday and uh, just wanting to look at uh, God's presence being manifest and what that means to us and how blessed we are to have the manifest presence of God. I want to look at the Old Testament. I know that we, we can look at the New Testament and we see the indwelling of the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter number 2. We see the gifts of the Spirit. We see uh, Paul as he, as he teaches and he uh, admonishes the church, uh, the New Testament church. Uh, those are all great manifestations. But I'd like to look back at the Old Testament. Remember that we do have a New Testament experience. And so we build on what is happening in the Old Testament. Uh, I, I love when folks can come into God's house and they say, there's something different about this church. I like that. And uh, what is that difference? What is what I feel? I believe remarkably that we can say it's the presence of God. Uh, it's the house of God. It's what sets us apart. Uh, there's a lot of folks who, uh, who are uh, in church, uh, any service. Uh, you know, maybe Tuesday night we can say, well, they say I'm tired. Uh, yes, Brother Craig, we're all tired, right? Uh, but that's no excuse not to be in the presence of God. Uh, uh, there's some that, you know, uh, that are committed to their hobbies. They can be many different things. I won't name them, but there can be many different things that they can be committed to. It separates them, really, not from God's house alone, but it separates them from the presence and the manifestation of the presence of God. And so with, with all that, I mean, even family, family, you know, we can uh, think of that, folks. Uh, you know, I have some folks that say, well, it's the only time I have to get together with my family. Well, bring your family. Don't we want to see the presence of God manifested in our family? Amen. So, you know, there, there are all kinds of things. And uh, uh, the, there are even folks that, that go to church and they sit in church and they daydream of the presence of God. I don't want to daydream about it, but I want to have a manifestation of the presence of God. I want the real deal, right, Brother Eli? I want Amen. I want to feel it. I want to see it. So I want us uh, to think about the presence of God. And I think perhaps when we look at the Word of God, uh, there are many examples that are given of the manifest presence of God. Uh, we see it in several several uh, uh, areas of the Bible where God's presence is manifest most often and many times. But Brother Craig, I believe that really when we look at the church, when we look at a congregation of God's people, I believe that Moses and the children of Israel are a great example of the manifestation of the presence of God. And I think there's things that we can learn from that, uh, powerful illustrations that Moses uh, tried to deliver the people of God on his own. Now, don't lose me. I know some of this can be uh, very common knowledge to us, but let's think about it in depth tonight. Let's think about Moses tries to deliver God's people on his own, and he fails. In fact, he fails so much that he runs away. So failure, and he runs away, and... Uh, not only did he run away, but I would say that we could say considerably uh, without any doubt that he hides. So he fails, he runs, he hides. And uh, so uh, it's interesting to me that prior to this, we see a young Moses who is strong. Well, I'm not talking about some guy who sitting behind a desk, pushing papers. I'm talking about a man of action and a man of strength, a man of knowledge. I mean, he's been educated in Pharaoh's court. He is smart. And uh, uh, he is a very forceful man. Uh, he, he, he's a powerful man, physically, morally, and mentally. And uh, he, he can subdue another man. And prior to... His, his failure, his running, and his hiding. Do any of you ever see that we find that he has a speech problem? Mm -hmm. Not prior. 
But afterwards we do, don't we? We see that he manifests that he has a speech problem afterwards. And so, uh, uh, it, could it be, and I'm just simply stating tonight, could it be that this educated man, this man who is physically and morally and uh, mentally capable of doing so much, could it be because of his failure that he finds himself uh, in, in, in a lack? He finds himself that pride has humbled him now. He certainly has been humbled because of his prideful actions, hasn't he? He's running. He's hiding. And uh, uh, he, he, he says, I, 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 I can't talk so well. I have this speech problem. And so it really comes to the place where Moses was ready for God to use him. Prior, I think that we could have said that Moses was ready to be used and he was going to be a man of action even in his own strength. But now we find him in his failure, his pride broken, his running, and his hiding, that he's really ready for God to use him. And uh, I love what Moses says in here in Exodus chapter number 34. Verse number 14, and he, of the Lord speaking, said, My presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. We'll reference this a few more times. So Moses is now ready for God to use him. He wants a manifestation of God's power and presence. We know that God is everywhere. Isaiah said it this way in Isaiah 66, 1. He says, The heaven is his throne, and the earth is his footstool. Now, I want you to imagine this. Moses already knew that God was everywhere. He was in every dimension. I mean, he's in, 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 in all the dimensions of the earth and above. Can you imagine, if you would, if I were to go over here and I would adjust this thermostat to make you a little warmer or a little colder, I want you to think of a mighty God who all he does is reaches out to the thermostat of the sun and he can adjust it to degrees. What a mighty God that is. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about God. That man can't get that close, but God says, it's my thermostat, I'll turn it down. Amen. That is a mighty God. He just, he turns the sundial back, and he doesn't just occupy the dimensions of the cosmos, but he, 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 he occupies all the dimensions of time and space. Every dimension that is it ever is. God, Isaiah said that God said that He inhabits eternity. I mean, all time and all space. This is God Almighty. So He's in every dimension. He's everywhere. There's a knowledge of Him being everywhere in all those dimensions. And yet He desires to reveal His presence in manifestations in certain times and in certain places. How awesome is that? Once again, he's everywhere in every dimension of the cosmos, in every dimension of time and space and eternity. I, I'm the sun, the moon, the stars, everything. Isaiah even said that the earth is his footstool. He's everywhere, but yet he desires in moments, spaces of time, in particular places, and I believe even more so when we come together in his house, that he gives a great manifestation of who he is, the he inhabits, inhabits all things. Mm -hmm. Wrap your mind around that for a minute. That's powerful tonight. And so, his presence manifest, tangible, real. And Moses, he comes to that place where there is a tangible manifestation of God's presence. What is it? What is out of the backside of the desert? What's that tangible manifestation? You know what it is. It's a burning bush. And so this God who is there in the bush and his manifestation to Moses because he speaks to him from the burning bush, it is a manifestation that's not being consumed. It is God. This all-consuming God, he could have consumed Moses, but he said, I'm not even going to consume the bush, but I'm going to make this a manifestation of my power to Moses. And he saw the presence of God. He should have been consumed, but he was not. God chose to allow this manifestation to be real to this man who has 
fail, who is humble, who is run, who is hiding, who maybe even in his own weakness now begins to have this uh, speech impediment uh, because of everything that's gone wrong. And, and God says, now you try to do it on your own, but my manifestation is going to be able to empower you to do those things that you could not do in yourself. Mm -hmm. Whoa, did you just hear what I said? God said, my manifestation is going to be able to empower you to do those things which you could not do within yourself. So if there are things that you and I have tried to do for the kingdom of God, for the bettering of ourselves, for the, for, 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 for the glory of God's kingdom, and we try to do it in our own mind, might, our own power, our own ability, even our own pride, and we fail, God said, why don't you wait upon me for a manifestation because that which you could not do, now you are going to be able to do because you've had a manifestation of my presence. Hallelujah. Brother Craig, that's what it's about when we've had a rough day at work and we're exhausted, we're, we're pulled and we're torn and you physically and, uh, and emotionally and mentally give all you can give and God says, do you know what? Now I'm going to give you a manifestation of my presence and it's going to empower you to continue to do the things that you need to do. Wow. I'm talking about how important it is to be in God's house. How important it is to have the manifestation of God's power. See, when he manifest, manifest, manifests himself, God does not manifest himself to hinder us, but God manifests himself so that he can help us. Aren't you thankful for that? Not that we're conquered, but that we are strengthened, that we can conquer. That's why God manifests himself. And so the great physician, he ordered the life of Moses, and he said, hey, Moses, can I just put this in lingo? Now, I'm not being disrespectful to God, but let me just put it how I can see it in my mind's eye. But God speaks to Moses, and he says, hey, Moses, here's this old dream that you thought would never come to pass. He said, the manifestation of me is going to bring an old dream to pass. Wow. That's awesome, Brother Eli. How many of us have old dreams that have never been able to happen? But when we have a manifestation of God's power, it can bring old dreams to the new vision and give it manifestation to happen. Praise God. I love that tonight. And so Moses, he had long ago chosen to be identified with the Hebrews and not the Egyptians. He made the right choice. In doing so, he allowed himself to be where God could help him. And so, at a burning bush, God transformed this shepherd. That's what he was doing. He was being a shepherd. And he said, you know what? That staff, that the rod you have in your hand, I'm going to use that when you get to Egypt. And you know what? That's going to be used to part the Red Sea. And I want you to know, Moses, in your life, every morning, I'm going to give manna to you, to the people of God. I'm going to give you water from a rock. I'm going to, I'm going to give you a manifestation of me. In fact, it's going to be a cloud by day. Day, and it's going to be a pillar of fire by night. There is going to be a manifestation that I am with you. And if I am manifested in you, I will empower you to do great things. And so no wonder Moses was able to go with God, amen, to the edge of the promised land. I know he was able to inhabit it, but I'm just saying he was able to get there. And the only reason he was able to get there was because of a manifestation of God. Yes. Amen. How awesome. How awesome. And so he says in Exodus 33, the verse number 14, once again, and he said, he said, listen, if your presence, it shall not go, uh, 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 my presence shall go with you and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. I will give you rest. And Moses said, uh, uh, to, if your presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. He said, that's it, God. I need your presence. Because if your presence don't go, I don't want to go. Don't take us in. I don't want to go if your presence isn't there. And so Moses was saying, God, if your presence isn't, isn't evident, and it isn't tangible, I don't go anywhere. How about that tonight, folks? That needs to be how our life is lived. That if there's an area that God's presence is not manifest and tangible, I'm not going there. 
I've got to be where there's a manifest of God's presence. Moses knew what set him apart. Moses knew what set God's people apart from all the nations round about. And so uh, it's the same with us today. The chief thing that separates us from non-believers is we know Emmanuel, God with us. The manifestation of God with us. How awesome is that? That's what sets me apart from everybody else that's a non-believer in the world. Because I have a manifestation that God is with me. Yes, tangibly, He led them by a pillar of, 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 of fire by night and a cloud by day. There was that tangibleness. He's working in and through us because He's with us. What are some things that are our are, are tangibleness of God's presence? Anything you can think of? Things that are tangible to you. The strength. So it's tangible because you're feeling that. He is our strength. If you're going off a of feeling, it's... Um, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the feeling of Him inside of me. I can feel that He's near. I can sense Him. If we're that going... is tangible to us as a believer. Exactly. It's the Holy Ghost. The other thing would be seeing Him move on other individuals at the altar. Absolutely. Because we know that what they're experiencing is real. That's tangible. You may say, well, I can't touch it with my fingers. But our spiritual man knows the tangibleness of the peace of God. The Word of God is tangible. I believe that our experience in church as we come together and the presence of God is tangible to us as believers. Anything else? Feeling that What's that? Feeling the Spirit. Absolutely. Feeling the Spirit of God. I was doing laundry downstairs about two weeks ago, and uh, my wife was upstairs, and I don't even have Saturday. We do laundry on Saturday, and it seemed like, uh, it was weird. I was doing laundry, and it seemed like the Lord was looking over my shoulder. I ain't looking back, like, see you there. It's just weird. It's Praise God, brother. It's weird. I mean, not weird, but it's... I understand. I understand. I mean, there wasn't no noise, and I didn't, I don't know, it was, I mean, I didn't say it. I said something to my wife, was you're crazy. I said, no, I ain't crazy. I'm telling you. It just seemed like the Lord was looking over my shoulder, and I looked back, and it was like, it just it's weird. It was different, I should say. Not weird, but. Amen. And you know what? For you, that is a tangibleness of knowing God's presence was there. You knew that you knew God's presence was there. And no one can take that from you. That is your experience. And I would encourage you. Don't allow anyone to take that experience from you. No one's doubt or disbelief anybody's. I'm, not, I'm saying that on a large room. Uh, because I've talked with literally hundreds of people. And uh, to be able to empower people to know that their experience in the presence of God, what God is doing for them. You know, there's times where some folks will say, well, they said it was the anesthesia. They said it was the medicine that I saw or sensed. No, I... Do you believe me? I believe it's true. Yes, I believe you. I believe in the manifestation of the power of God in lives. And so you have to hold on to that experience. Well, I'm not going to have a rapid chair. And so he, he, he knew that there was no substitute for God's presence. He knew that there wasn't any cheap invitations. You know, the, the rest of the world, they can go chasing after a lot of things. Obviously, what was in Egypt was not something uh, uh, Moses wanted or any of the children of Israel. Even after being there 400 years, they saw bitterness. They saw hatred. They saw people done wrong. They saw people building uh, kingdoms but not satisfied. And so Moses said, I want the real deal. And so he knew that God's people, they functioned by one thing, and that is the manifestation of the presence of God. Amen. If God is in our midst, nothing can harm us. If God is in our midst, we are not helpless, but God will help us. 
And if God is in our midst, we will not wander, but we will be divinely directed. If God is in our midst, I don't even trust in my army, but I trust in the power of God who's taking care of the army. I don't need to rely upon my personality. I don't need to rely upon my fortune or the people that I know. All I need to know and do and rely upon is a manifestation of God in my midst. Powerful is that tonight? So Moses said, God, only when your presence moves will I move. And I love what he said here. In verse number uh, 14, God said, and I will give you rest. Now rest here in the Hebrew, the word used is notch, N-A-U-C-H. I'm not, I'm not an expert in this. It's just things I studied or read. And, and, and so it, uh, that, that word rest means a place of refuge, a place where you can lower your guard. No, no matter what we face, no matter what we go through, we have that rest in the presence of God, no matter what our circumstances are. You know, there are times in our life there are some people we have to be cautious of the words that we choose because their history tells us that they will twist our words. They will misconstrue it's true. We've all probably been there where you're cautious of what you say or you, there's a particular situation. You're cautious of, 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 of your, your, your verbiage because you don't want to hurt. You don't want to alarm. But in the presence of God, we can lower our God, our guard. We don't have to be cautious. Really, even in the world that we live in, we have to be cautious. We have to. It's the world that we live in. But in the presence of God, we don't need to just go through the motions. We can lower our guard. We can find a place of rest. We can find that place, as Sister Rachel, of calming peace. As we enter into the presence of God, particularly into the house of God, where there's a manifestation of God's presence. I'm not just talking about God's presence, you know, where we, uh, we, we, we get quiet. Some people say, oh, it's church, we need to be quiet. And we do, we need to be respectful. But you know how it is when the presence of God just begins to manifest. Is it just quiet? There's a stillness that comes with it. Because God is working in the And we can let down our God because of the rest. It's a place where we can be joyful. We can, we can rejoice and we can be exuberant. Because in the presence of God, the enthusiasm is contagious. Because it's a manifestation of God's power. This is the great thing. He said that where there are two or three gathered together in his name, he said, I'm there in the midst. I need to tell you that where the king is, there is power. It may just be you and I, but if the king is there, there is power in that. And uh, if it's you and I and the presence of God, Brother Dennis, there's comfort there. There's rest because he's the comforter. Uh, it's, 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 it's a great thing that each of us as a child of God can have the abiding presence of God in our life manifest in our life and there can be divine order in our life. We can walk in order and not in chaos. Mm -hmm. You know, we can have a busy schedule, but yet we can know that God's presence is manifest on us and there is order and not chaos. And, and there's peace and there's not worry and not strife. Isaiah said, and I said it on Sunday night, that God said, He will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee. As we look to the author and the finisher of our faith, amen, we can believe and not be confounded. We can know that we're in the shadow of the Almighty and there's protection and there's refuge. We can know that we don't have to be afraid of the error that flies by day or the terror by night. That we are triumphant. We are victorious. All things are under control because we're His. Mm -hmm. I told the story before. The farmer who went out going through his barnyard that had been burnt down and 
He was frustrated. His work, his effort, you know, well, some time ago, uh, so, someone uh, back in West Virginia where my mom lives, the uh, little, little pyromaniac came and set my mom's bar on fire, burned it to the ground. It was devastating. It was years of work, and it was years of seeing the labors of family members of my dad gone. And so I know what that's like. And the farmer seen everything burn. He's walking through his barnyard, and he came upon the uh, roasted carcass of the chicken. And in frustration, he kicked it. And out from it needed the carcass of that ran little piece that Mama had carried underneath her wing and protected them from the fire that burnt. There's a place with the manifestation of God putting his wings around us that brings protection. You see, God is willing to reveal his presence. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, a wicked king told Abraham one day uh, in, uh, in Genesis 21, 22, he said, Abraham, there's something different about you. God preserves you. And God is with you wherever you go. See, we are all the children of Abraham. Father Abraham had many sons. I have one, and so are you. All right, I'm left, I'm right, foot left. You want to do it? So we're the children of Abraham, our father. And there was a manifestation that was seen of God being and blessing and preserving Abraham. And we have that same blessing upon our life as the descendants of Abraham. Let's go what God said to Joshua. As Moses is leading, leaving off the scene, God comes and he says to Joshua, Joshua 1, verse 5 and 6, he said, There shall not be any man to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, hold on to your socks. He said, I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, I will not forsake thee. Be thou strong and courageous. As I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. You see, the succession moves from generation to generation. God has been with the previous generation, but God is going to be manifest and with us in our generation. What did the angel of the Lord say when he appeared to Gideon in Judges 6, verse 12 and 14? The angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord God is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Go in this might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Uh, what is uh, uh, this thy might? You see, uh, the first thing is we have little to do with it, but we have to acknowledge that we want God in our life. Mm -hmm. And when we acknowledge Him and desire the manifestation of His presence, He will be with us and He will help us. Jeremiah, he was told that people would rise up against Him, but in Jeremiah 15, uh, uh, 20, the Word of God says, For I am able to save you and deliver you. He speaks to the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 43, verse number 15. He says, Fear not, when thou passest through the waters, but, uh, they shall not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. He, and he tells them that, that I am with you and I have loved you and I am for you. Amen. Folks like to talk about the favor of God. But the favor of God comes when we allow ourselves to be yielded to the manifestation of God's presence. Mm -hmm. And that's when my faith Praise God. Amen. God is faithful. Let's get past that for the sake of time. You know, David in Psalms 139 talks about not being able to flee away from the presence of God. See, as long as we're seeking God, we can't get away from the presence of God. The manifestation of <laughs> he told David, whatever you do, wherever you go on this earth and up in the sky, far and near, I'm there. I'm already there, and I'm there with you. You see, a king named Asa, they called to God, and he had a million man army that had come against him. And he prayed to God, and God gave him the victory. That's what he said in 2 Chronicles 15 2. The Lord is with you while you be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But he said, if you forsake him, he's going to forsake you. The impending promise of God's manifestation is, is that we have to seek him and not forsake him. 
if we're going to gain and maintain the presence of God in our life, we have to turn our life I believe that there are some sincere people in the world, and I don't want you to get me wrong tonight. You can be sincere and be sincerely wrong. They can say, I really want God's presence, but until you're really sincere with getting yourself where you allow the presence of God to move through you, you'll never find it. We have to seek God. We have to be committed to God. Moses was committed. He said, God, I'm not going to go and do this thing if you don't go with me. If you don't move and show me the way, I'm going to go. You see, understanding that there can be friction, there can be fear, there can be frustration. But after a manifestation of God's power, it breaks with the peace. There can be chaos, but a manifestation of God's presence, it breaks through to showing Himself. You know why a lot of homes are in disarray? Is because there's no manifestation of God's presence.
So if we are that ark of the covenant and there is a dwelling of God's presence where there's a manifestation of his power, people are going to see the presence of God in us. Do you know you house the presence of God? And you are going to show God's presence. So, Brother Justin, when you said, when we come to church and we see the Spirit of God ministering and blessing other people, that is a manifestation of God's presence. Because we are the temple of God. And the Spirit of God dwells in us. And where the Spirit of God is, there will be a manifestation of God's presence in our life. And so tonight, when you come, your life is showing me a manifestation of God's presence. I love when people stand and testify in church because you know what it is? It is a manifestation of God's presence. I love when people get lost in the Holy Ghost and they just begin to speak in another tongue and, and, and they're lost in that presence. That is a manifestation of God's presence in their life. I love when people stand and they weep and cry. I love when people shout and run. I love when people are slain in the Spirit because it is a manifestation of God's presence. And God, I don't want to go anywhere where your presence is and it is not and there is not a manifestation of you. Mm -hmm. I don't want to belong to a dried up dead nominal church. I want there to be a manifestation of God's presence. Because we know that that's where his glory is. Moses said, God spoke to Moses. He said, there, I'll, I'll go with you. And there is where I'm going to give you rest. Moses said, show me your glory. Because if you don't show me your glory and give me rest, I can't do it. I've tried and failed. So here it is. Many years later, God looks and moves. We must seek him, know him, be like him. I just want to say this. This is what I want to say to people, and I want to say this to our church. Quit looking for these prophecies and signs. Just look for 